We are now charging at Ionity Clet. Woohoo! We found a spot there <laughs> in between the Lalas now. So look, we arrived with 1.5%, but now we are taking 160 kilowatt. Oh yeah! This one should soon crawl to 500 amp. Yeah, so we have okay temperature in the battery. That's good. But what is important is you, you always go deep and then we get the maximum speed. Well, soon, soon, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll see, we'll see. But the next stop is going to be Klet, no, 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 it's going to be Aldon. But one strange thing is that I cannot find charges when I browse like this. I, I don't know what's up, why it changed, but okay. See, Aldon is here and then you go to Ionity. You know it's here, right? Uh, roughly the gas station, huh? Yeah, so. Uh, I will just do this, I guess. Aldal off-road, off okay. Well, Pizza has been successfully reheated. And now we are at 48%. Oh, wow. We could go soon, but I need to eat. We are now at Alvdal and no, 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 it was minus 17. I don't know why it shows 16, but it's, it's minus 17 degrees Celsius. Freaking Alvdal. It's so cold. Look here. Okay, battery is cold. We, we came deep. That's good. So we're getting 112. That's actually not ideal, but whatever. Okay, it's gonna heat up. Don't worry. But I'll show you guys what it does. It doesn't even have the EL. Wait. It doesn't have the E license plate. That's the Toyota B set thing. I need to check it out. So, it's the branch banking new Toyota. Look at it. And it's minus 17 degrees. Uh, uh, is, it, is it rude to check out the charger screen on another car? Okay, I'm, I'm gonna do it anyway. You just, I would just be kind of like, yo, what's up? Man? Yo, what's up? Man? Oh, look here. Oh, look at that. We are, the, the car is charging at 55 kilowatt. They've been here 28 minutes. That means that they're charging at, uh, no, no, they've been at, oh, yeah. Wow, this one, I guess, doesn't, doesn't charge very fast. There's an iX3. Maybe you can see how fast, the, <laughs> maybe you can see how fast the iX3 charges in comparison to the, the but, this is the first time I've seen it in real. This, you know, it's it's um, this this car, the the Toyota. There's been lots and lots of discussions about Toyota. I think I need to make a video, a rambling video about the Toyota because I don't have first-hand experience. But it's very thirsty, and it charges the dog slow, and it's kind of expensive also. I think. 
But okay, anyway, it's cold. Oh, it's freaking cold. Okay, so you see, it was getting, I was getting 112 kilowatt. Okay, it's still 112. But it should heat up and we should get more speed in this. But as always, I always do this. You see, air conditioning immediately, which is like keep climate on. And even at even at low state of charge, low-ish state of charge, it will work as long as we are connected to a fast charger, I think. So yeah, we are on the move again. So yes, uh, now we're heading towards Elverum. And you see, we are using travel assist here, the auto stair system. It works like a charm, even in curves, huh? Nice, nice, yeah. So um, see, I like to have this screen up here in the infotainment screen, which is the, the car will estimate how many percent you will arrive with. 19%. The only thing is that I estimate around 10% at the arrival. And I suspect that the car uh, thinks that I will be driving at the speed limit, which might not always be the case. But Tesla, on the other hand, is way, way better at estimating. Uh, it seems to take into account how fast I drive. Also, if I'm pulling a trailer and stuff. So it's super accurate. But this one is already, okay, it gives me an indication, which is good. There's a good start at least, yeah. So see here we have car scanner with all the stats over there. And then here you can see the ambient light, huh? Nice, nice. Here, here you see illuminated shelf. Oh yeah. And then over here we have the lube ready for action. And then here you see the storm bike bottle. We are now at Inlandsputten. Um, I'm not sure if you guys know where it is, but you see, the main road is here. When I do range tests, I will just zoop, drive here on the motorway and then drive north towards Harman and that stretch. So I almost never stop here, but I've seen it when I pass by here. I've seen it in lately that they have installed chem power here, but this is not a recharge, it's actually Mer, more, more, no, but uh, Mer used to have some shitty tritium 50 kilowatt here, but they have now recently upgraded to chem power. Look, we have lots of chem power. Wow, these are, these have many, many, uh, chem so one, two, three, four, five, five chem power. Very, very interesting. Oh, it's dynamic. Guys, it was, it was when, before I plugged in, the screen actually showed 160 kilowatts. Now the screen shows 100 kilowatt available. Oh, it's the whole dynamic loading thing, whatever. But I will show you something here. We are getting 137 kilowatts. And if you click here, you see the details. You see that the charger is delivering 372 amps. When I was at the chem power at Shell yesterday, I was limited to 300 amps only. But that was recharged. And I talked to chem power about this. Um, the cables here, they are not water cool, but the passive cable like this one is, is similar to what uh, uh, they have on the, on the um, uh, Delta chargers. They are also not water cool, but on Delta chargers, you get 375 amp, which is, on a, for example, on Tesla, you get roughly 135, 140 kilowatts. And actually the chem power would be able to, like this one, you see? We are getting the same speed we will be getting at uh, Delta chargers because the state of charge is actually not that low. Wow. But okay, what I'm saying is that Mer, they implement the chem power like it should be, allowing 372 amp. Whereas at least what I've seen in recharge, they only cheap, they kind of cheap out and, and only allow 300 amp. So, but I need to test more 
uh, recharge site, but <laughs> it's actually kind of bad because it means that um, recharge, they are kind of giving Kempower a bad name because when every time you see the Kempower, you'll be like, oh no, this, these are the shitty chargers that supposed to give 150 kilowatt, but you only get 100, 110 kilowatts. But then Mer, you get more because it's Mer. <laughs> okay, but okay, enough bitching about that. Um, before, it used to be kind of shitty here, but here we also have Coppola. And Coppola, they have um, some new chargers. Wait, can I walk here? Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, let's walk over here. It's kind of dark here, but I'm going to show you. So, Coppola, they have some Siemens chargers. I've never seen these before. These are 180 kilowatt chargers. Lean Lauder. Yeah, you see, up to 180 kilowatt. I guess two times 90 kilowatts. They have plenty of these. And then there's one over there. I wonder what that one is. But this one, I've never seen it before. It has a freaking humongous screen. Move interface up. Yeah, wow. <laughs> and not only that, uh, let me try to ninja it. Over there at Circle K, we have the Hyper Hyper Charger. But that's Circle K's network with some 50 kilowatts. So this location now has lots of fast chargers. <laughs> awesome. But you know what? Um, I don't need to charge too much. I estimate that I need to spend 22% to get to Dar and with 8% margin roughly, then I only need to charge 30%. And first I thought about trying trying this one and then move over to Circle K maybe or move over to some other one. But I think we don't have to move to another charger because we are probably done by now. Yeah, 27% and taking 135 kilowatts. <laughs> so, right, I think we will just prepare and then go over to Dahl. Now at Ionity Dar, battery is nice and hot, and we're getting 500 amps, 183 kilowatt. This car charges like a bus, bu bu bus, bus, yeah, bus. Wow. All right. So now we just need to charge a little bit. Uh, I could go straight home, but this is the plan. I'm going to do a range test here. Uh, with the bus because it's uh, minus four degrees Celsius. I have not done a winter range test with ID bus yet. So that is the plan. I'm going to show you outside. We have so many Ionity chargers operational now. Wow, this is wonderful. See, four over there, four over there, four, wait, 12, all the 12s, uh, the 12 stalls are operational now. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Tesla Bjorn is home at Dahl. Oh, it feels great to be here. We came here before 11 even. So, yes, now I will go to the restroom and then we do the, the yeah, yeah, we do the range test. I want to know how thirsty is this car when it's kind of cold now. We do the standardized range test now. Yeah. All right, we're now done with the range test. It was interesting to see the consumption. It was actually similar to what we would expect on this trip today. So that's good that it's, it's kind of on par with that. But anyway, so yes, I noticed that when we managed to hammer on the motorway here, we have higher battery temperature and we get a nice and flat curve, despite being minus four degrees Celsius outside. So, but we have more than enough juice now. So, oh, let's go back home. I'm getting tired and it's almost one at night here. We still need to drive around half an hour more to get back home. So let's go.
We are back in Osona. I just cleaned the car. It needed a cleanup. But yes, so this was a nice trip to the Arctic Circle. Okay, we didn't go exactly to the Arctic Circle, but it's good enough. Anyway, yes, uh, it's actually 1.30 at night now. So, and tomorrow I'm going to fly over to Thailand. So yes, I have lots of st stuff to do before I travel. But the trip, the car, how was it? It was awesome. You know, this is okay. Remember that it's a van. So you look at the numbers and think, oh man, it's kind of thirsty. Well, yes, but it's a van. It's a boxy thing. But you know, I think actually, if we would try to do this trip in, let's say, Hong Chi, or fat e-tron we would actually get similar consumption numbers but that's a way smaller car this is a van so i think for a van it's a relatively efficient car and then we have all the space and we have the comfort and as i mentioned before okay may maybe some of you guys are wondering so how was the comfort well the ride comfort is pretty good it feels more like an suv than a van but i still feel that the heaviness yes 2.6 tons with a with a cargo that's also 2.65 tons roughly so but other than that i think this is one of the better cars to go on a road trip with if you need a lot of space but if you don't need a space maybe an suv or something else is better for you but yeah when it comes to space this id bus is just awesome and also for hammering it for the power i actually didn't feel like it was that slow really i could hammer yeah uh, on the trip <laughs> overtake i mean and it was still fine no problem there so i think that's gonna be it for now hope you guys enjoyed this video as always thank you for watching and talk to you later